tell us the truth. Family want answers after patient was vaccinated with COVID-19 vaccine. Janet Belford had her reservations, but went willingly to the Portmore Art Academy Vaccination Center in St. Catherine on Sunday, April 11th, 2021, to accept dose, one of the two dose AstraZeneca inoculation on offer. Four days later, the 69-year-old was pronounced dead. She died at the University Hospital of the West Indies early afternoon on Thursday, April 15th. Her loved ones still don't know why. The Jamaica Observer sat down with her self-professed favorite Neville to unpack what remains for him a matrix of questions. My aunt and I spoke just before she took the vaccine and she seemed fine. No complaints, relayed Michael Spence. My sister Beverly even popped in on Monday and she was a-okay. He said that the first two days after receiving the jab were uneventful for his own. However, by Wednesday morning, she began complaining of stomach and back pains. Her daughter, Mariam Sukram, with whom she lives, dialed the Ministry of Health and Wellness hotline, as indicated in the literature distributed at the vaccination center. The advice from the representative, whose name she did not note, as it seems unimportant then, confirmed that such pains were among the miscellany of side effects that could be associated with the jab, and two panadol tablets were in order. This was complied with. By morning, however, the pain had grown more severe. She thought she needed to see a doctor, said the concerned nephew. Belford was taken to a medical facility in the two west community of Greater Portmore, St. Catherine, near to her home. The doctor there, when he heard it might be vaccine related, sent him straight to UC, UHII. She did not even leave the car, Spence told the Sunday Observer, noting that they had been transported by a niece, a member of the Jamaica Constabular Force. The journey to Papines and Andrew Hospital grew quieter as they traveled, he recounted. My cousin decided to call someone to keep her talking, so she called my other aunt, Bedford's sister. She prayed with her sister and they talked, and then she got quiet again. He said of his aunt who reports as a Christian woman. On arrival at UHWI Accident and Emergency, A&E Department, medical personnel were alerted to the distressed patient in the vehicle. Reportedly, after some time, a nurse came to the vehicle, no park just outside the unit, and ran back inside to fetch a doctor. The nurse said she was unresponsive, so she went for a doctor, said Spence. It was observed that she lifted her arm, but it felt limp. The family member said soon Bedford was wheeling to the A&E and the relatives were told to wait outside. Just about an hour later, medical personnel advised him that Belford had remained unresponsive and died. The family members were told that no further information was available and they should return the next morning, Friday, April 16th. Belford's daughter recalled that the pain her mother endured seemed to be all over her body. She explained that as they readied her mother to go off to the doctor, she ached all over and was very sensitive to every touch. My Aunt Geneve was a lovely woman, suspense. She had a way to make everyone feel special. She had her own daughter and son, but she treated all her nieces and nephews like her own. We were her sons and daughters, and we knew it. She cared deeply for us all.
Belford was a long time hypertensive but was reported as being regular with her medication regimen and followed an average diet. Her death is more than a shock. Had she been really sick and later died, maybe we all would be handling it better, he said, indicating that Bedford's daughter had to seek medical attention to calm her pressure and hearing that her mother would not be returning home. The family indicated that they are not in pursuit of blaming anyone or anything they wanted to know what caused them to lose their matriarch. Something just are incomplete and we want some answers, Spence said, speaking to the Sunday Observer from New York, USA. When Bedford's daughter and niece who had transported her to the doctor the day before returned to UHII on Friday, she was told that the body would need to be tested for the presence of COVID-19 an autopsy would be required. The hospital then advised again that nothing further was available. While on my way home, they the hospital called to say that the post-mortem was scheduled for Monday morning at 8.30 a.m. No results for the COVID test was given, advised her daughter. Back at UHWI on Monday, April 19, Sukram identified the body but was told she could not observe the examination. She waited outside and was later issued a document indicating that definitive cause of death awaits completion of post-mortem pending. The family was however advised that they could engage a funeral home of their choice and have them pick up the body the following day. Burial was therefore permitted, but they said we could not do a cremation. This raised concerns, said Spence. Body release, but no cause of death, no death certificate, and no cremation. Why? Nonetheless, the family secured the services of funeral directors and advised them that they had been authorized to collect the remains on Tuesday. When the undertakers arrived at UHWI on Tuesday, they advised the family that the body had not been released to them as they still had to take more fluids. The funeral director returned later and successfully took custody of the body. I want to be very responsible and not cloud the issue or cause any more doubt on the process. But we need to know what happened. What is the cause of her death? Asked the nephew, who is himself vaccinated with the Johnson Johnson one dose vaccine. Everyone has to make their own decision about the vaccine, but full disclosure by the medical team is important. This business of not saying anything does not sit well with us. Whether or not the vaccine resulted in her death, we want to know, Charles Spence. Up to late Friday evening, when checks were made by the Sunday Observer, nothing further had been heard from UHII. While funeral arrangements in observance of COVID-19 protocols are being pursued, with cremation not being an option, the family still wants answer. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not a medical doctor. I cannot give definitive results. But I want to hear from you in the comment section below. What did you think happened to Geneve Belford? Do you think she died as a result of being vaccinated? Or because she suffered from hypertensive, she died from under ill in issues? Let me hear from you in the comment section. Please like and share this video. And if you have not yet made your comments, please, now is the time to do so. Be safe. Practice social distancing. Sanitize your hands and wear your mask. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.